Yorokoso. My name is Dairaku, and I'm giving this whole Let's Play thing a go. So, I figured I'd start with a game I haven't played in a while, which is Bubsy and Claws Accounted of the Third Kind, one of the games I got when I was a ten-year-old. So, I figured I'd give it a go, because as Bubsy says... What could possibly go wrong? That's right. What could possibly go wrong? So here we go. Bubsy is a... If you haven't played it before, Bubsy is basically a Sonic clone. So it's one of the games that came out in the early 90s as a... basically inspired by Sonic the Hedgehog. And literally this game was. The developer of it, Michael Berlin, the creator, he literally sat in his room for a week for 14 hours a day getting inspired to make this game. Uh, before he made the game, he was, the company Accolade was mainly known for its um, adventure style games. So this was an entirely different shift in direction for them to go into arcade stuff. And they figured they'd go with um, basically a Sonic inspired one. And as it turned out, I mean, they were going to go full on with this. and. As it's come up through the years, occasionally there's been a um, revival of interest in this game from time to time. But the main thing is that, um, like it says on the box, it says, Why watch Saturday cartoons when you can play them? And that's exactly what this game is. It's a very simple game, there's only two controls, jump and glide. The jump and glide. The main criticism of the game that people have is that it tries to be too hard to be a Sonic clone and when you try to play it like a Sonic game, you die. And I'm sure I will be dying a lot in this. I haven't touched this game in probably over 10 years. So it's as fresh for me now as it will probably be for you watching it. So. What's the whole point of the game? Why even, you know, pick this one to start with? I mean, it is somewhat badly maligned, I would say. At the time it was released, it was very uh, hyped up. It was uh, given very good ratings, like typically 70 to 90% by a lot of the magazines and review companies. Uh, because it was released in 1992, and 1993 was really when it started to kick off. So, that's when I first discovered this game as well, in 1993-1994. Uh, we used to have a TV program here, afternoon TV game show, uh, by the name of Amazing. And one of the, um, one of the components of it was that the, um, for like round three or something, the, uh, school kids would basically play a video game against each other and whoever got the most points won. And what I'm doing up to now, I learned how to do from watching the background of them playing this video on the TV screens in Amazing. Because this place is full of little hidden secrets like this. So, really, why is Bubsy doing what he's doing? What I'm doing is basically collecting all the yarn balls. They're basically the equivalent of coins or rings or whichever in-game currency you prefer. And the blue ones are the most worth in terms of points, they're worth four. And then it goes down red, green, yellow. So the more blue ones you can get, the higher your score. So what I'm going to do ideally is try and not uh, interrupt the recording because my score will reset each time I uh, turn off the game. So Gotta be doing this as a batch recording. We'll see how this goes. Especially as my first recording to do it all in one go. Ay ay ay. What have I got myself into? Now fortunately in these bonus levels you can't die. Or at least it's very hard to. You can run out of time though. So now that I've got to the end of there, I'm going to continue on my merry little way. And try and get to the end of the level. Because each level has one uh, bonus area in it. 
I'm just checking down there to make sure it's safe to go down there or not, which it is not. Despite Bubsy being a bobcat uh, and a wildcat, water is very bad for him. So I'm going to try and not get in the water, just like that. Uh, very keen thing to learn about this game, and I'm just doing it right now, is pressing up and down to look up and down, and the L and R shoulder buttons on my Super Nintendo here to look ahead and forward. It's probably best to hold, hold it forward. Yeah. So you can see what's coming up, because when you don't, you will die. And one of the things I liked about it, and especially as a 10 year old when I first got this game, was just how expressive he was. Uh, that was one of the reasons why I liked Sonic the Hedgehog in the first place. There we go, end of chapter one. Basically, it's go as fast as you can, get as many balls of yarn as you can, and then it tallies it up. I believe every 500 you get is worth an extra life, so I haven't really started very well. I can get over 500 on that level. But as you can see, I have 13 lives. Why do I have so many lives? This game is very punishing. You will need all the nine lives that you start with. Did I mention I don't like heights? For one of those reasons as well. So, I'm you start up high on this level. And as I look down, let's make sure that I don't end up going somewhere I don't want to go because I just want to go in here. Now the bonus level. Now I'm not particularly necessarily always good at these ones. The ones in the earlier stages of the game I'm a bit better at than the ones later because I'm more familiar with these ones. But the premise is much the same. Get as many wall balls as you can. Get your score up. Sometimes I have hidden or surprises like that one, that gives you a random score from, uh, I think it's 1,000 to 7,777. It's like a Plasmatron, I think its name is. I would have to look at the manual. Because this is very much uh, in the scheme of Accolades Adventure Gaming. Back at that time in the 80s and 90s, when, when you wanted to learn how to play the game, you read the manual. And the manual for Bubsy is very... Very reflective of its cartoon origins, or all cartoon inspiration. Oh, this is probably one of my favourite background tunes in the game, in the cave sections here. This is also probably going to be the first place I'll die. Just checking to see that I'm not going to land on something horrible. There we go. Yeah, it's one of the main criticisms that people do have of this game is just how fast you can go. I mean, with it being Sonic inspired, it's very much the case. Now, I wanted to come up here to get that switch because there's a lot of water down the bottom, otherwise. And Bubsy does not like deep water particularly much. We'll do the whole um, animation. We'll we'll probably see it at some point when I fail. Okay, do I want that one-up t-shirt? No, I don't think so. He doesn't like uh, spikes, he things as well. And that's what happens when you run into a wall. So I'm not going to do that again, or try not to. Now, I don't trust my jumping over there. I could probably get over there with a glide, but I don't feel confident enough. So I'm just going to go around here. Now they're bouncing down there. Now what I need to do is get to the left here. And there'll be an exit out of this cave. And that's why I got the water down. This was all covered in water just before. There we go. And on another water slide out of here. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of happy accidents in this game, sometimes. So, 
looking before I leap. Just make sure there's nothing going to be throwing anything at me. Because there's a lot of projectiles in this game. Now, I'm a little bit cautious about that crate up there. What those boots will do is throw you backwards across the map. And I'm not particularly a fan of doing that at the moment. Now, that's it because... Oh, here we go. So I have to come back now. Fortunately, back to where I started. I think... Oh, goodness. That could have ended badly. But just as well I have... Oh, those uh, exclamation points, they continue. Start. So when I die, I'll just restart from there. Generally, most of the goodies are on top of the roofs here in the town. The other problem with Bubsy is that when there's a um, particularly steep incline, he'll just walk down it. There's not a lot of uh, ability to stop him. Okay, then we get another cave. So the second level is much bigger than the first one. Looking up ahead, leaping over. I know that there's a whole heap of tacks down here. Now this is an invisibility shirt. I don't know if you'll be able to pick it up on the camera where I am now. But it doesn't make me invincible. And that thing that just popped up in the corner, that is my death counter. So I'm hoping to keep that as minimal as possible. Now, if memory serves, I think I've just lost that shirt as well. I don't think it resets because I'm dead. Down, I think, is water. Yes. So I am going down there. Let's check there's nothing over there. Come back up here. Yep, there goes my invisibility shirt. Oh, well. Let's so take the long way down here. don't think those waterfalls go down into a pit of spikes, but they'll just go near it. The reason for a whole heap of these little caves being here, and that was very lucky what I just did. Apparently during the uh, quality testing they got some kids into the Accolade Studios and were like, oh, what do you like about this game or what do you want more of it? And they basically said, uh, we want more hidden surprises, more things to look at. So. A lot of these sort of cave areas, you're only going to find them in the first three levels of the game. Oh, there's the pianos. They hurt. You will get run over by them. But very much your Saturday morning cartoon um, inspiration there. There goes another one. There he goes. Oh yes. They even say it at the 45 degree angle on these flat bits. It's ridiculous. Let's see if I can get one of them to show up. Here we go. Here we go. 45 degree angle. Screw gravity. Okay. Anvil boxes like that, they're just a... Uh, a weight for you to um, bump into. The other problem with this game is that the hitboxes can be very uh, temperamental. So when I jump to land on the enemies here, which are called woolies by the way, I'm trying to do my best to make sure that I don't land next to them, because if I do land next to them I'm likely to die. Got just under three minutes left, but that is plenty to get to the end of this level. I should be very much near it right now. One of the things that this game has taught me is glide to look down when you're uncertain. Just glide. There we go. Oh, this is blue balls. Come back here. There we go. So 439. Not too bad. 
Still would have preferred the 500 though, but I probably would have got it if I hadn't died in the cave. So that was level two. Move on to level three, the last level in the town. Let's go. More like a bridge too short. This game is pun believable. Right. So now we're in level three. Check this anything up here. Nope. I have to admit, I don't remember everything too much. But I do remember where the bonus is in this world, and I'm just going to head there straight away because it's right here at the start. And once again, just looking before I leap. So what I might do is have some faith, and off we go. Oh, that was fortunate. Now, that's an exit cave. Yes, the trains as well will hurt you. You can jump on them though. And it's this one on one. Because now the bonus. Now let's see how good I am at getting through this. Ooh. Trying to land on these platforms. Nope. Didn't happen this time. There goes my opportunity in that bonus. Oh well. Now these caves, and you'll find them in pretty much all levels, they actually act as warps. And there we go, they'll bring us over there. If I go in again, it's going to take me much further ahead. But you can also use it as a bit of a guide to see what's ahead. And I see that there's one up I could collect on the way. But I think I'm not going to be able to make it, so sorry for the backwards and forwards thing. I'm going to go back the other way. And I'll start again here. Even the bad guys have animations. Apparently, according to the back of the box, Bubsy alone has 40 animations. Now, 40 might not seem that much these days, but remember, this was 1992. And this game tells us it has 16 glorious megs to deal with. Oops. That was a waste. And there's the death animation for water. Don't particularly want to see that very often. So now my death counter should be up to two. Now, the Japanese have a term for a game like this. They call it a shinige. In other words, a game you're likely to die in a lot. Fortunately, those plant pots aren't going to kill you, but you can't trust everything in this game. So, would Bubsy be called a shinige? Oh, I don't know. It can be. That was very lucky what I just did there. This game is very much um, what Mega Man was to a lot of people who had a, uh, an NES. Unfortunately, I didn't. My, um, I was lucky enough to have an 8-bit system, but mine was a Master System. So, I never got like a whole heap of the um, classic 8-bit games. And I shouldn't have done that. No, oh, I've missed that one. Oh! Red cars are bad. Red cars are very bad, they will take you away. Oh, let's notice the uh, traffic lights there. All right. Yellow cars are okay though, they will bounce you up. But you can also get run over by them. So this game is very much about avoiding things. Oh. And thank you, Hitbox. I just jumped on that at just the wrong moment. It's not a very forgiving game, this. Like I said, it gives you nine lives to start with, you need all of them. But that round red thing that I collected in the first level, that is a continue, so in other words, when I lose all, all of my lives, I will get another nine to go. Unless it, can I do it again? Oh. <sighs> this is how this game's gonna go, isn't it? Oh well. I think I'm up to four now. You'll know because I will have put my death counter in. Alright, let's try this a different way. Now there's going to be more cars along here, they're probably going to come towards me. I won't bother with that one. Ooh! That was fortunate. Alright, I don't think this is the final kill. 
And there's the cheese wheels of doom, as promised in the first level. And they just magically teleport them in. I don't know how they do that. It's cartoons. Let's just say it's cartoon physics. Oh! Gumball machines are very bad. Now, I'm going to go up here. Hopefully he's not going to throw eggs at me. No, he's not. Eggs will hurt you. Every, nearly everything in this game is designed to hurt you some way. And of course, yeah, the more points you get from uh, chaining your enemies. So, the levels got multi-pathing, uh, which is one of the things I really like about the game, is that there's more than one way to get to the end. So I'm just trying to see what's up here, because I don't always remember. Now, a little bit of tricky mini platforming here. And that didn't go well. Oh well. Found another bonus cave. Or at least a um, hidden area cave. Ah. I remember this one now. It takes you back to a place you can't access otherwise. I'll just check there's nothing going to hurt me down here. You get that. Go back into the warp cave. Should take me back here. And then where that water was, it's now disappeared. But I think there's spikes down there. Yes. Okay, let's not get popped by attack, if I can help it. Just taking this very carefully along here. There we go. And you get your life. And now we have to make our way back again. Let's try not to waste that life there. One jump. And there we go. Now, up here. What have we got? Nothing so far is going to come kill me. Okay, I have to be careful with this. Make sure I don't jump into the top enemy there. Well, you can get them if you glide into them normally. As long as you're somewhere in like their top half, they don't mind. They don't mind. Well, they probably do mind actually. Okay. This is not a good situation. That gumball machine is very tricky. So I'm going to have to jump all the way over this. A bit of a run up. There we go. It can be dangerous to just jump ahead and hope, but sometimes that's your only option. Because, uh, like I said, one of the main criticisms of the game is that the camera, or the physical area on the screen, is just too zoomed in. And you can't really react until... Uh, it's too late, and then, by then, often you're dead. Right, I believe this is the boss battle. There we go. Right, so we have to kill these giant UFOs. And it's a simple matter of jumping on each one when the woolly appears out of it. Like that. But I'm going to try and focus on the red one if I can. There we go. And every time you land another hit, it changes key. There we go! And that there is the end of level one. And for now, that is the end of this episode. So, I will meet you again in episode two when we're going to go to the fairground. So until then, everybody, Otsukare-sama!